Today we have a special surprise for you. We're taking you to the house of the great painter Jan Mateko. Let's go inside. The National Museum in Krakow was established by a resolution of the Krakow City Council on October 7, 1879, as the first national museum institution at a time when the Polish people were deprived of their own statehood and country, which had been appropriated by the partitioning powers of Austria, Russia, and Germany. Until the end of World War I, it was the only such large museum accessible to the public in the Polish lands, and to this day, remains the institution with the largest numbers of collections, buildings, and permanent exhibitions. The collection of the National Museum in Krakow was begun with Nero's torches, Henryk Szymanowski's painting presented to the city of Krakow by the artist himself on October 5, 1879, with the intention of creating a gallery of national art in the Sukinonitsa, the Cloth Hall. The following day, October 6, 1879, 39 artists attending the celebration of Józef Ignacy Kraszewski's 50 years of work as an author gathered in Konrad Wenzel's townhouse at the main market square and promised donations of their works to form the initial collection of the newly formed museum. The artist's example was soon emulated by private individuals who began to send donations to the museum in the Sukhennica. In this episode of Poland Daily Culture, we are in a different room and we will explore something more. Mrs. Marta, what room are we in? Jesteśmy w salonie domu artysty, pokoju reprezentacyjnym, w którym Jan Matejko przyjmował gości, w którym odwiedził go również cesarz Austrii Franciszek Józef. We are in the artist's living room. It was a representative room where Jan Matejko used to invite his guests. In this very room, an emperor of Austria, Franz Joseph I, paid him a visit. Due to the fact that the museum's anniversary, as I mentioned before, we prepared an exhibition which we set up here in this this room as a museum's exhibition, and it looks exactly like the first exhibition from a hundred years ago. We can see portraits, Jan Matejko's self-portrait, and a portrait of Chicherin, which museum get as a gift. During the museum's first years, many donors sent their own artworks, donations from the lottery. Those pieces of art completed our exhibition. In this very room, in the accordance with the fashion of that time, the cabinets with Jan Matejko's orders. We have here the most important ones, among others, a scepter in recognition of his work and his position as one of the most respected Polish artists, golden wreaths and medals for his artwork. He received a gold medal for his painting called the Sermon of Piotr Skarga, the Legion of Honor for the Union of Lublin and the Order of Pope Pius IX for his painting, the Battle of Vienna, which is right now in the Vatican's museum because Jan Matejko gave it to Pope Leo XIII as a gift from Pauls. An amazing story is connected to this painting. He was working on this painting in a hundredth anniversary of the battle. Jan Matejko shown this painting in Vienna. He paid for a room so that inhabitants of Vienna could watch it for a whole month for free. Matejko's secretary was telling everyone a story about this painting to remind people from Vienna that the Polish king with his army took part in the battle and helped them win. After the painting was handed over to the Vatican, Jan Matejko received a blessing not only for himself, his family, and people who came there with him, but for the entire Poland. On the next day, well-known European newspapers wrote about this. It meant a lot to Poles because it was the time of the partition of Poland. A miało to ogromne znaczenie dla Polaków, bo przecież był to czas wciąż zaborów. And those two books over there. To książka związana z wystawą, jaka odbywała się. This book is connected to the exhibition that was entirely dedicated to Adam Mickiewicz's work. We have many works of artists in our collection. They usually write about historical events, science, they organize exhibitions and they often donate their work to our museum. On the table in front of us we can see an album in which students put their artwork. Na stole przed nami również album, w tym 
latach jubileuszu często studenci darowywali Janowi Matejce albumy, do których włączali swoje prace. Just how strong the need to create such an institution was is exemplified by the fact that soon after the opening of the first museum exhibition in September 1883, the volume of donations grew exponentially. Not only single objects, but whole collections were donated. From the outset, the museum gathered works by contemporary and historic Polish artists from wherever they had lived or worked. The items collected included national mementos and objects connected with individuals recognized for their services to the country or otherwise relevant to national history and culture, including art prints, manuscripts, old prints, numismatics, decorative art objects, and militaria. As far as possible, examples of foreign art, including Far Eastern art, were collected as well. The turn of the 20th century coincided with a change of director at the National Museum, following the unexpected death of Professor Władysław Uszczkiewicz on May 23, 1900. The committee of the National Museum announced a competition which selected Dr. Felix Kopera, until then the director of Count Emeryk Hutenczapski's museum in Krakow, and his appointment followed on April 25, 1901. In the same period, the museum doubled its floor space after the Friends of the Art Society vacated the other wing of the Sukinnica. Following renovation work, an entirely new, considerably larger modern exhibit was arranged, which, in addition to showing artworks chronologically and thematically, also included archaeological and ethnographic objects. The collecting of the latter was discontinued soon thereafter due to shortage of space and in light of the rise of institutions specializing in these areas. So what room are we in now under the stars? Pokój pod gwiazdami, który był buduarem żony artysty. Pokój urządzony przede wszystkim pamiątkami z kolekcji malarza. This is the so-called Room Under the Stars, which was the artist's wife Boudoir. The room is decorated with the artist's souvenirs from his trip to the Middle East, Turkey, today's Iran and Syria. We have here Persian prayer box, Persian carpets, Turkish furniture, souvenirs connected with the Polish history, and also souvenirs that his wife used in everyday life, a boat-shaped table with many compartments in which she kept sewing accessories, needles, threads, etc. We have also other things like the Biedermeyer's furniture. Originally in this room were also this guardian angel hanging on the wall from 1627. There are also some personal items like the ones in the cabinet, Jan Mateko's summer jacket, a hat, a stick which helped him walk, and his Chelsea boots. On the other side of the guardian angel's painting, we have other religious paintings from 1875, titled The Assumption of Mary into Heaven. A short digression, Jan Mateko didn't want money for his religious paintings. He gave them as a gift. His last amazing artwork was a polychrome of the St. Mary's Church in Krakow. The room under the stars was artist's last bedroom. He died in this very room on November 1st, 1893. Ten pokój pod gwiazdami stał się również ostatnią sypialnią artysty i w tym pokoju malarz zmarł 1 listopada 1890. Let's move to the other place. Zapraszam dalej. Sypialnia Jana Matejki mieściła się w tej niszy sypialnianej. Jan Matejko's bedroom was located in this room. It was decorated with the tapestry from the collection. It was a normal tapestry that belonged to Mary, Kazimir, Louise de la Grange, the Arqueen. The tapestry is one of the three that came from the Chinese room of the Pit History Castle. It was handed over to Matejko during his visit in Lwów. A bookcase stands next to his bed, in which are many historical books and a Bible. He often read them. When he died, an idea of museum came up. 
and we decided to keep this room the way it was. So we kept his bed and a bookcase. We enriched this room by adding these plaster masks made after his death. According to the habit of the second half of the 19th century, people made plaster masks of famous people after their deaths. And we have them also in our collection. Apart from the plaster mask, we also have a mask made with silver. Mm -hmm. So this is the actual mask. Yes. When first visitors came to the museum in 1898, they considered this place as a place of worship. They wanted a candle here beside artist's bed. 